Okay, we'll call the meeting to order this morning. And uh, as you can see, Commissioner Schulte is not here. He has other business. So uh, I am the vice chair, uh, Commissioner Stamper. So at this time, we at termination, we do have a quorum, Commissioner Fund and myself. And uh, Commissioner Fund, would you please lead us in the flag salute? Please stand. May be seated. I move to approve the minutes of May 23rd, 2016. Motion has been made to approve the minutes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Public comment? Ed Peterson. A little disappointed Mr. Schulte's not here, but I did speak with him about this at his home this weekend. I'm here to speak today about the Wild in the Trillennium Falcon Festival, an electronic music festival that was illegally held at Rainbow Falls, in the vicinity of Rainbow Falls State Park, for over 36 hours this weekend. They had no ambulance on site, no permit, no bond, no insurance, no fire crews. They were playing music until 3 and 4 a.m. Friday and Saturday nights and Sunday morning. 36 DJs with vulgar names that we have students present. I won't embarrass you or them by reading some of the names. People damaging private property, people damaging public property. The state park ranger informs me that gates at the state park were damaged by people that wanted access to the state park Friday night. They were harassing local residents that were walking by on the Willapa Hills Trail. The smell of marijuana was strong throughout the entire valley, and good for them. Hey, it's legal as long as they're over 21 but the event was admitting people over 18. It was widely publicized on Facebook for at least two weeks. They invited 6,400 people to our quiet little community. Luckily, only about 500 showed up. Had the entire 6,400 showed up, the Lewis County Sheriff's Department would not have had the resources to deal with it. My question is, the county has a code regarding music festivals. The code contains criminal penalties, including punishment of a fine of up to $5,000 and 364 days in jail for the people responsible. It was clearly evident that this was an organized music festival and not, as the property resident characterizes it, a small party. Why was this thing not shut down? Why was it allowed to continue to terrorize the residents of our valley for 36 hours? of non-stop pounding music all weekend long. I would hope that you'll ask your subordinates that question. We had every reason, they had every reason to know that this code was in violation and to go in there and tell them to stop, shut it down, get off the property. You had people camping illegally, improper sanitation services, no water services, driving up and down Looting House Road, turning around in people's driveways, arguing with property owners about where the party was at, I don't understand. Now, the thing is, most of us residents out there wouldn't have minded if they'd posted public notice, done the proper thing, gotten the proper permits, I probably would have joined them. But they did it illegally. They inconvenienced us all for an entire weekend, and it was absolutely ridiculous. So, thank you. Thank you. And I understand your frustration with that. We are also similarly frustrated. I know the prosecutor and the sheriff's office are meeting this morning over this and our community developments looking at this, but th this was not to be happening and it did. And we see on Facebook that they're planning another event over the 4th of July weekend. So we will be more prepared this next time if that... Another event at the same property? Yes. Well, I can tell you the person that's resident at the property is not the property owner. It's owned by a family trust out of Woodenville. But the property resident did own it at one time. And she characterizes, well, her response was, oh, dear, we have a misunderstanding. There was no organized event. It was just a small party. As if we're just simple country bumpkins that don't have access to the Internet and can't read Facebook. Yes. So thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Appreciate that. Now at this time, I would like to have the uh, salutatorians of the school and welcome them up here. It's, uh, it's a real privilege and an honor to have individuals come up who have worked so, so hard and
to culminate their high school career, and I know that graduation is coming up, but uh, we would like, uh, Lewis County would like to honor them for uh, their, uh, their, just their hard working and all their achievements so far to this point. We know there will be another chapter, but this one is closing soon. Okay, with the following salutatorians come up. Savannah Massingham from Adna. Hayden Blazer from Centralia. Do you want to give her that? Yes, we'll keep you up here. Caitlin Johns, also Centralia School District. Madeline James from Chehalis. Garrett Yarder from Chehalis. Okay. Emily Mackey from Morton. Jaron Kirkley from Mossy Rock. Temperance Gibbons from Napa Vine. Nicole Maschiola from Onalaska. Josh Schultz from PL. Sally Martin from Toledo. Emily Barge from Toledo. Mackenzie Anderson from White Pass. Casey McCarson from Winlock. And Ariana Pennington from Winlock. Okay. All right, let's go take a picture. The valedictorians, Timothy Manghan from Adna. This is Madison Cruz, but I want to say Maddie Cruz from Centralia. Elizabeth Johnson from Centralia. Christian Peters from Centralia. Nathan Anglin from Chehalis, Jared Chung, Chehalis, Adam Schwartz from Chehalis, Alex Suiso from Chehalis, a lot of the, a lot of Victorians, Rory Slattery from Chehalis, Colby Armstrong from Morton. Alicia Herrera from Mossy Rock. Olivia Alvord from Napa Vine. Melissa Martinez Minoz from Onalaska. Whoops, I'm sorry. Did I just take Colby's? Olivia, there we go. Yes. Haley Compton from PL, Wesley Kosminski from Toledo, Quinton Workamus from White Pass, May Surbier, S U H R B I E R from Winlock. Can you tell me how I should be saying that? Maya Serbier. Serbier. Maya, Maya Serbier. And Maddie Teitzel from Winlock. 
Okay. And at the conclusion of our meeting, we'll be having cake with the salutatorians and valedictorians. And as we've done in years past, we always talk about, we hope that you valedictorians and salutatorians, may, you might go off to school, but come back to Lewis County, come back to your home county, and we're hoping to improve the economic uh, impact of jobs in our area, trying different ways, and we hope we'll have a job for you so you can come back, back here to your home area. And I would just like to, uh, to thank all of you for being here. And I know that it's, uh, we had quite a number of you that were not here, but I understand it's a very, very busy time. So I appreciate you taking time to come up here and let the county honor you and uh, for just your outstanding service and uh, over the last 12, 13 years, whatever it may be, and, uh, and look forward to seeing you soon in the future. So thank you very much for being here. And it's a real privilege and an honor to... Uh, to serve all of you and uh, be a part of this, so thank you. And I was reminded recently by one of my fellow graduates from Onalaska High School that it was 50 years ago this month that I was the valedictorian of that. 50 years, it goes like that, folks. <laughs> what? <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Okay. I approve, I would like to move to approve the proclamation, number one, honoring the Toledo High School Baseball State Champions, and number two, proclaiming June 2016 as National Safety Month. Okay, a motion has been, and I second. A motion has been made to accept the proclamations honoring the Toledo High School Baseball Team of 2016 and also the proclamation uh, for June 16th, National Safety Month. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Would you like to read? I am going to read. Okay. Before the Board of County Commissioners, Lewis County, Washington, proclamation honoring the 2016 2B Champions Toledo High School Boys Baseball Team. Whereas the Toledo High School Boys Baseball Team is comprised of high school boys and baseball players and whereas the team has completed a very successful season, winning first place at the 2B championships, baseball championships, and whereas the players, coaches, parents have spent countless hours at practice, traveling and to and from games, supporting the team, and whereas the Lewis County Board of County Commissioners wishes to recognize the accomplishments and contributions of all those involved with the Toledo High School boys baseball team. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the BOCC recommend the Toledo High School baseball team for their winning season and publicly thank all the parents, coaches, volunteers in the community who supported this and other youth athletic teams. Done in open session the sixth day of June 2016. Thank you. And uh, I would say they obviously are not here today, but. Uh, and this is a very, very busy time. They're not only competed as the champions, but they're also for uh, purpose of graduation. So uh, when you get a chance to see them, congratulate them and thank them. So. Pardon me. It's Tawny. There she is. There she is. I knew you're here. Come on up, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. 
before the Board of County Commissioners, Lewis County, Washington, proclamation, June National Safety Month. Whereas June is National Safety Month, and whereas National Safety Month is an annual observation that draws attention to the hazards we face at work, at home, and on the roads, educates and offers solutions for reducing those risks, encourages safe practices all year long, and whereas National Safety Month, June 2016, will be declared accident-free month, a challenge is hereby issued to all Lewis County employees to remain accident-free for the entire month of June. Each week, communications to employees will focus on a specific aspect of safety as follows. Week 1, June 6th through the 10th, will be stand ready to respond. Week 2, June 13th through the 17th, be healthy. Week 3, June 20th through the 24th, watch out for dangers. Week 4, June 27th through the 30th, share the roads safely. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Lewis County Board of Commissioners proclaims this month of June 2016 as National Safety Month in Lewis County. We urge all citizens and communities to join us in this special observation. Done in open session this sixth day of June 2016. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you very much. Edna? Okay. I move that we approve the notice agenda, items three and four, resolution number 16 149 through 150. I second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve notice hearings, resolution numbers 16 149 through 16 150. All in favor? Well, let's take there for question. Oops, question. Sorry, sorry there, Mr. Elsie. Good morning, Commissioner Tim Elsie. Speaking of items number three and four on your notice agenda, item number three is a notice of hearing regarding a franchise to Claquato or Claquato Cemetery Claquato <laughs> Cemetery Association to conduct, operate, and maintain a water pipeline and Lewis County rights of ways. Hearing will be held on or after 10 a.m. on Monday. July 11th, 2016. This is resolution number 16-149. Lewis County Code 12.20 and RCW 3655 require that all utility installations and county road rights of way be authorized by a franchise. An application for a franchise has been received from Claquato Cemetery Association to construct, operate, and maintain a water pipeline on Stearns Road, Elmview Drive, Claquato Drive, and Highway 603. This resolution sets July 11th at or after the hour of 10 a.m. as the time for the hearing of the franchise request and instructs the clerk of the Board of County Commissioners to proceed with all appropriate and necessary notifications. This is a renewal of a franchise. I, this is for irrigation. And I think you'll remember that the last time that this was renewed, we actually went to the trouble of ensuring that we checked water rights and things like that. So this, this should be a very easy franchise. The next item on your agenda is proposed vacation of a, porches, a portion of unmaintained Yoke Street in Packwood. Uh, this resolution acknowledges receipt of an engineer's report on the proposed vacation of a portion of unmaintained Yoke Street and sets a hearing date and calls for necessary notifications, postings, and publications. Resolution 15-121, passed by the Board of County Commissioners on April 13, 2015, declared the Board of County Commissioners' intent to vacate a portion of unmaintained Yoke Street and instructed the county road engineer to examine the road and report his opinion on the vacation as required by RCW 3687-010. The property owners adjoining that portion of Yoke Street have requested the vacation. Utility companies known to service the general area have been notified and have acquired all the necessary easements for their utilities lying within the area to be vacated. The property owners located at the end of the maintained Yoke Street have granted the county a public turnaround. The county road engineer has prepared his report on the matter which is hereby submitted. Acceptance of report of the report and passing the attached resolution would set July 11, 2016 as a hearing date for consideration of the matter. RCW 3687050 requires publication at least once a week for two consecutive weeks preceding the date fixed for the hearing 
in the county official newspaper and that a copy of the notice be posted for at least 20 days preceding the date fixed for hearing at each termini of the county road or portion thereof proposed to be vacated. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, resolution numbers 16-149 and also numbers 16-150. Motion has been made. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Regarding the consent agenda, we are adding item number 11, and it is to appoint a member to the Southwest Washington Fair Commission. And I have a note here that it's 16-158, but wouldn't it be 157? It's going to be 158. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So I move to approve the consent agenda 5 through 11, resolution number 16-151 through 156, and then number 11 is 158. Okay. I second. Good morning, Commissioner Suzette Smith, Auditor's Office, Financial Services Division, here to present to you agenda items number five and six this morning. I apologize, agenda number five is long due to the holiday last week. This is resolution number 16-151, and it is the weekly approval of warrants and payroll against the various county departments. For the last two weeks, we had 508 regular warrants, Number 748256 through 748378, 748516 through 748714, 748809 through 748933, 749177 through 749236, regular warrant total $1,623,138. In addition, we had payroll dated June the 3rd, we had 479 automatic deposits and also warrants number 748934 through 749131. Total payroll and benefits, $3,446,766.73. In addition to be noted, we had skips in sequence. We had three of those. These were for warrants issued on behalf of the special purpose districts. Their commissions individually approve those warrants number 748379 through 748514, 748715 through 748808, and finally 749132 through 749176. Any question on that laundry list? Okay, the next one is our monthly request for voided warrants. This is resolution number 16-152, and we have two warrants. Warrant number 745788. This was lost by the vendor. The vendor has submitted an affidavit of lost or stolen instrument, and once it is deemed void, the warrant will be reissued. The second warrant is 745233. This was paid to an incorrect vendor. The warrant was returned and has been reissued to the correct vendor. First warrant was for $14.70. The next warrant was for $19. And we request that you deem these void. Any questions? Thank you. Tim L.C., Public Works Director, speaking to item number seven on your consent agenda. This is resolution number 16-153. Bid award for the P.L. McDonald Bridge Scour Repair Project. This contract provides for P.L. McDonald Road milepost 8.68 bridge scour by performing scour mitigation protection, large woody debris, rock for erosion and scour protection, green gabions, gabions, and other related work, all in accordance with contract plans, contract provisions, and the standard specifications. A call for bid was made on May 2nd, 2016 by resolution number 16-131. The project was advertised for three weeks in the East County Journal, the Chronicle, and the Daily Journals of Commerce, Seattle, and Portland. The project was also listed on the county's website. Public Works received three responsive bids for this project on May 24, 2016. Betcher and Sons Incorporated provided the lowest responsive bid of $190,795, which is above the engineer's estimate for this project, which was $159,261. 
And one of the things that we see is that in a dynamic economy, as we have right now, as the economy seems to be getting better, um, it is difficult to, for the engineers to provide precise estimates, especially on these unusual type scour mitigation projects. So we reviewed the all three of the bids and have determined that even though this is above the engineer's estimate, it is within the contingency of the bid. So we would recommend that we would um, award this to Betcher and Sons in the amount of $190,795. Thank you. Before you go, Mr. Elsie, last week you made it public that you're going to be moving from here. That's correct. Would you like to tell folks where you're going and... Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I, uh, it was one of the, the most difficult decisions I've ever made in my life, and I, I gave my um, notice to the Board of County Commissioners on Friday morning and then later announced it to the equipment rodeo, our sixth annual equipment rodeo since I've been here. And I am moving closer to home, going to be close to my mom, who will be 83 this year, but please don't tell her that I said that. Um, and it's, it's a neat opportunity for me in a growing coastal community in um, the low country of South Carolina. It's right outside of Hilton Head and between Charleston and Savannah, Georgia. And I'll be their director of engineering and helping them create some long-range plans. They're, they, they're a dynamic, growing community, and they need an engineer to come in and help them with their master planning. Could you tell us how much the population was previously and how much now it's grown so quickly? It went from one square mile just a few years ago to 54 square miles. And with that, they've been doing a lot of visioning, but they've never had a, a director of engineering to help them implement that visioning. And so um, last year they did 600 single family resident um, building permits. And so far this year, they've already done another 600. Amazing. So. It's a, it's a very nice opportunity for me, and it will be nice for me to get back close to mom. And we won't be saying goodbye to you until July. So. That's correct, middle of July. And uh, we've got some loose ends to tie up and uh, to ensure that some projects continue forward. And the most important two in my mind are the Borst Avenue sidewalk projects and then the North Lewis County Industrial Access. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Tim. Good morning, Danette York, Director of Public Health and Social Services, and I am speaking to items 8, 9, and 10, resolution number 16-154 through 156. 16-154 is reappointment of members to the Veterans Advisory Board. Uh, per Lewis County Veterans Advisory Board bylaws, the membership on the board comprises of no less than seven regular members with two alternate. The purpose of this resolution is to reappoint Donald Keeler, James Martin and Larry Mason to fill regular board commission board positions and their appointments will go from July 1st, 2016 through June 30th of 2018. Resolution number 16-155. This is to approve an Amendment A to the Consolidated Homeless Grant between Washington State and the Department of Commerce. So this is the, the big grant that comes to us from the Department of Commerce to, uh, to affect homeless or imminently homeless individuals in the county. The previous amount of this grant was $454,603,000 and this amendment adds $537,006 to bring the new grant total to $991,609. And typically when we receive this grant from the state, it comes through our department and then we subcontract those funds out to our local providers of housing services. So you will be seeing other contracts either um, those subcontracts either amended or new subcontracts coming forth soon and the last one for me is resolution number 16-156 and this approves the agreement between lewis county and the department of housing and urban development so hud at the federal level level to provide the McKinney Grant Transitional Housing Program in the amount of $154,167. This contract comes directly to us from the federal government, the HUD department. Uh, it's 
under a strange fiscal year of May 1st, 2016 through April 30th of 2017, it, it also is homeless assistance funds. It's called the McKinney Grant and the McKinney Grant goes only to one provider who is currently the Housing Resource Center, formerly known as the Lewis County Shelter Program to provide these services. And just for emphasis, it says the contract is for the fiscal year May 1st, and we're doing it in June, but yes. government is slow at times, and uh, we didn't get the money until recently, so... Yeah, we didn't get the approved contract until recently. We did know it was coming, mm -hmm. uh, so it was budgeted, but we received the... We process it as quickly as we receive it, and it takes that amount of time. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to speak to item 11, appointing Daryl Lund to, for two years to the Southwest Washington Fair. And uh, we feel very fortunate for Daryl to accept this nomination. He is very interested in history and especially the fair, and he's bringing a lot of good ideas, and uh, we look forward to his input. Any other comments? Okay. A motion has been made to approve the consent agenda, or consent agenda, and it, all, in, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion passed. Now it's time for the public hearing uh, portion. And um, Mr. Elsie, and we have, uh, uh, we'll first have staff report followed by question and answer period. We will then close the question and answer period and open the hearing for formal testimony. Good morning again, Commissioners. Tim Elsie, Public Works Director. Uh, this hearing is to consider approving a franchise to construct, operate, and maintain water and sewer system facilities on county rights of ways in Lewis County, Washington, and this would be to the Cowlitz Indian Tribal Housing. Um, Lewis County Code 12.20 and RCW 3655 require that all utility installations on county road rights of way be authorized by franchise or license from the county. An application for a franchise has been received from the Cowlitz, Cowlitz Indian Tribal Housing to construct, operate, and maintain water and sewer system facilities within county rights of way. The hearing was set by resolution 16-133 on May 2nd, 2016 to give all required notices to the public. Public Works recommends approval of the resolution to grant a franchise to the Cowlitz Indian Tribal Housing. As this is not a new franchise. This is an extension of the old franchise. Do we have any public? Oh. We have a question. Any question from the public? Any questions from the public? Mr. Elsie, anything else? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to have your, your uh, testimony uh, put into formal testimony and uh, for public record? Yes, please. And there is no public testimony. No one has signed up. Is there anyone that would like to speak to it? Okay, even though you're not signed up. Ron, Mr. Averill? <coughs> Ron Averill from Centralia area. I'm, uh, I'm speaking to this because I think it would be interesting for the public to know that this is an area where we as a county uh, working with one of the local tribes, we're able to both benefit each other by this particular project. Uh, some of you may know that we used to have a, a Catholic school out at Toledo called St. Mary's, and that, that school was eventually bought by the Cowlitz tribe, and they put a, a housing development in there for elderly tribe members. 
uh, but uh, the septic system didn't support the school. Uh, we had an airport which uh, had a septic system. And by joining together with the tribe and uh, the tribe's access to HUD money, we were able to put a small sewer plant at the airport, and that sewer plant benefited both us at the airport for our people that were there and for the tribe at the St. Mary's School for their housing development. So this is an area where we both benefited by this, uh, and, um, and we're just now renewing it. This is our five-year renewal that um, we planned in so that when we do renewal, someone's around that remembers what actually started it in the first place. So. Thank you. Are there any else, any other people willing to or wish to speak to this? Okay. I move that we approve resolution number 16-157, franchise to the Collets Indian Tribal Housing. A second. Motion is made to approve. I second it. Res I second it. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Thank you very much. And I, and I do want to state just quickly that it has been my distinct honor to serve this board, previous boards, and certainly the residents of Lewis County for the past six years. Thank you very your much. Service. And you're not done yet. No, I'm not done yet. Development. Lee Napier. Good morning. Lee Napier, Director of Community Development, speaking on the next hearing item, which is um, Ordinance 1269. This is a proposal to revise Titles 16 and 17 of Lewis County Code. Um, I'll start off the staff report and I'll be joined um, by Fred Evander, our senior long range planner. So the proposal before you today is to consider some code changes. Um, this comes to you as a recommendation from the Planning Commission. Your Planning Commission um, hosted several workshops on this matter where they had the opportunity to hear feedback from the public. And in this case, um, I recall Lori Spogan representing Jorgensen Timber providing testimony as well as Ron Averill and Glenn Aldrich representing the Farm Bureau. And they provided feedback into the Planning Commission's process. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on April 26 and is their recommendation that has been forwarded to you. Um, since that time we've also had some public input from representing the real estate lending and title company and they will be speaking here today. With that I'd like to turn it over to Fred to speak to the content of the code. Hi there. Uh, uh, it's great to be here today. Uh, what I'm here to talk about is indeed these code changes. So what these code changes are intended to do is simplify the code process and clarify the, the development permitting process. Uh, essentially, um, you could boil it down to saying uh, it's going to create a new section 1705 within the code uh, and it would remove similar portions that are scattered elsewhere throughout the code. Um, it would take eight different types of permit applications that we currently have now, and it would make it five different types of uh, permit applications. It would make the notice peri periods consistent, um, the notice time frames consistent, um, uh, and it would uh, do a number of uh, things to eliminate and reduce the redundancies that are uh, scattered throughout the code. Um, it would group all the airport sections in one place. It would group all the special use provisions in one place. Uh, and it would group all the administrative sections in one place. Now, um, if, if you folks or the, the board is questioning why, why is that important, special uses is one example. Right now we have special uses in three separate sections of the code. Um, it is very complicated when you have one type of permit in three separate sections. Um, I'll also note that it would change uh, some, um, uh, there are some policy changes in this um, that I want to make explicit. It would remove the ability of certain neighbors to request a public hearing 
for certain administrative uses. Now those administrative uses are businesses up to five employees, uh, uh, recreation, retail, not to exceed 5,000 square feet, all that sort of stuff. It would reduce the notice times for certain types of permits, that's specifically special use permits. Right now for a special use permit, you have a 30-day notice period, which is quite long. We don't have to do it 30 days. It would reduce it to 15 days, uh, which is requirement in state law. Uh, it would re uh, uh, rework the methods of providing notice to, uh, to landowners that are near agriculture, uh, agricultural lands, mineral resource lands, and forest resource lands. Uh, and it would also clarify the process for how master plans get approved. So that, in essence, I mean, this is a giant document. I tried to simplify it. Um, um, in short, um, it's, all of these changes are a good thing. I, I would, I'm trying to figure out how, how many pages we would actually reduce from the code by doing the, these set of changes. And it's at least 50, but I want to say it's closer to like 70 or 80. Um, uh, it's been through all the, the relevant uh, uh, review th steps. It's been to the Department of Commerce for their 60-day review. We've held a uh, uh, public hearing before the Planning Commission, and we've also issued a, a CEPA DNS on it. We've and also is, issued a... Uh, for the audience. Oh, yeah, I'm CEPA. sorry. Uh, uh, CEPA is State Environmental Policy Act um, Determination of Non-Significance um, on, on the proposal. Um, the proposal's been, th uh, uh, we also noticed this public hearing um, in the way that we're supposed to under the Lewis County Code. We sent notice of the, the materials to uh, the senior centers, which we do, and the Timberland Regional Libraries. We've also had a copy at our front counter for anybody interested. The document comes to you with a unanimous recommendation from the Planning Commission. They spent a lot of time on this. So that's it. Could you tell us? sort of like the composition of the Planning Commission. I think we have a really diverse Planning Commission. We do have a diverse Planning Commission and quite a few members. Um, so we have, um, thinking about the folks that sit in the chairs twice a month that you sit in, um, we have real estate represented, we have financial institution represented, we have agriculture represented, um, we have a hydrologist on our staff, and... Um, we have a community activist, so I think we have a seven-member board that represents a wide range of interests and is dedicated to this making Lewis County a better place to live. It, it of course, is a big geographic composition, too. We've got people from throughout the county. Thank you. Thank you. Would you like to have your comments placed in public record? You bet. Yes, please enter our comments into the record. Okay, thank you. Question? I have no questions, but I, maybe the audience does. Any questions? We have no one signed up, right? We do. Okay. Come on up, sir. This is your first time, right? Yes, this is my first Question. time. Question. What's the procedure now? <laughs> I'm Ron Averill, and uh, this morning I'm representing the Lewis County Farm Bureau as their legislative uh, chair. Uh, and as indicated, we did have an opportunity to look uh, at these two chapters, 16 and 17 of our code. It was of real concern to us because initially uh, one of the impacts in the first draft was our Right to Farm Act, which is very important to us uh, in Lewis County. Unfortunately, when you get people that come down to the county from Seattle and they uh, come to these nice, tranquil open spaces uh, and then wake up in the morning and find out that that uh, rooster out there likes to crow, uh, that they uh, cattle uh, leave manure on the ground, and that uh, there are insecticides and, and other uh, things that you have to deal with, uh, and they start complaining. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, if you're going to have food to go on the table, you have to have some protections for the farmers. 
And so uh, we did um, uh, have concerns because part of that particular portion initially had been changed. And um, w as, as we went in and looked at it, Glenn and, and myself and some others on the Farm Bureau, I'm happy to say that all of those changes that were taken out were put back in. Uh, there is a very small section of that Right to Farm uh, Act that had to deal with uh, some uh, permitting things, and they got moved. To, they're still in the act. They just got moved to a permitting section. So, one, we want to thank you very much for that. I do uh, want to register, and I, 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 I certainly endorse passing this because I think that it does the job that you wanted to do. It makes... Uh, permitting a, a more streamlined, it cuts down on the verbiage and takes out some of the confusion. But uh, we, we have been working with the county for several years now about our concerns on growth management. And uh, one of the, the current projects that's been going on for a couple of years and has gotten a lot of local interest is the agritourism uh, uh, measures that we're working on. And as, as we've pointed out, uh, unfortunately, the Growth Management Act and the implementation of that act through codes actually prevents our agricultural lands of long-term commercial significance from participating in this. The, the implementing codes are in Chapter 17. And those, if we're going to, to allow our big farms, uh, not just the ones that are in, in the RDD, but the ones that are in the ARL to participate in this. We've got to make Mr. changes. Mr. Averill, could you say this. with RDD and ARL? Yeah, the, just the, for those the rural development districts in the agricultural resource lands. Thank if we're going to allow them uh, to participate, the ARL uh, to participate, we're going to have to make changes to this code. I did talk to Glenn, uh, and I know that this is in the future. Uh, but uh, I would ask that, that we look at this as soon as we can because, again, uh, we think that agritourism has a place in the county, but our farmers aren't going to be able to participate unless we change the code. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Aldridge? Good morning, commissioners. I'm Glenn Aldridge, and... Um, I'm a committee from the Lewis County Farm Bureau. Uh, Ron had originally appointed me to work on this uh, when he was president of the Farm Bureau to work on ag tourism. And, and then with the change of our leadership, I, I must have caved in to Maureen, I guess, but uh, a lack of good judgment or whatever. Anyhow, I still end up being the, the, uh, the committee. Um, we have, for some time, have, since the development of the current comprehensive plan, I think I could, could um, rightly characterize this as there are some injustices that are handed to the people who are operating on agricultural resource land. And the point of that is that there are things that we cannot do that our neighbors next door can do. One of the things that happened, I think, in the course of establishing the comprehensive plan was that a, a, a huge um, lack of recognition, I know it was placed on the record, um, a lack of recognition that we traditionally and currently do a wide variety of activities to enable a commercial farm to exist economically. I believe economic viability is part of the language in, the, in that comprehensive plan. Chapter 17, uh, Right to Farm, is, is the right place, I think, for you as commissioners and on behalf of the county to place the first of what we think are likely a number of corrections to that plan, and that is to allow us to do agricultural ag tourism on agricultural resource lands. Um, we sent a letter to the commissioners hmm, several months ago, around the first of the year, I think, yes. Yes. indicating uh, the County Farm Bureau's position on, on the ag tourism thing, and basically indicating, yeah, we'll help you try to get this thing accomplished, and we expect you to kind of help us 
<laughs> when, when the time comes. Uh, and, and in the meantime, uh, we've participated in good faith. There's uh, at least four of us in the Farm Bureau that's participated in the, in the ag tourism workshops. And um, I, th I felt pretty good about the direction that was all heading in support of the very issue that's before us today. And that is that we should be allowed to do ag tourism on agricultural resource lands. Um, I did meet last Friday with, uh, with Lee and Fred, um, and I, wa I want you to know we got along really well. Hey. Uh, they, were, <laughs> they, they, were, they were courteous, and, um, I, and I, I do appreciate that. We didn't agree on, the, on the, what came out at the end. Um, it appears that the county is planning to try to s resolve this issue by way of a, of a policy or tolerance policy. And in our view, tolerance policies don't work. It would be rare, it would be extremely difficult for someone to make a serious investment to bring people in for the weekend as an ag tourism event based on a tolerance policy, which can change according to whoever is administering the law. We feel that the language needs to be in plain, readable language on the paper. So at this point, I'm still, I'm still within the direction that's been given to me by the, by the County Farm Bureau Board that we ask you to insert agricultural tourism, and that's in quote, agricultural tourism, as basically a single word, hyphenated if you want, in the definition of agriculture in the early, very early part, I think it's right in the first introductory paragraphs of, of chapter 17, that you do this as a commissioner since it's already slipped past us, frankly, and not getting this step done with the planning commission. And if, if you have a problem with trying to get it done at this point in the hearing that you at least postpone, send the chapter back to staff and ask them to do that very thing. That you include agricultural tourism as one of the things that's allowed on agricultural resource land. Now, absent some action on this to help us out, I, th I think it would be reasonable to assume that the, that the County Farm Bureau Board may want to re-examine our policy and uh, I have no idea how, how, that, will, how that would sh shake out. But I really would appreciate uh, if you could do this today. Now is the time. Thank you. Other questions? No. Okay. Thanks. Steve Ryan? Did I? Thank you. Chairman Stamper, Commissioner Fund, my name is Steve Ryan. I uh, represent the Lewis County chapter of the Association, the Washington Association of Realtors. I've been a lender in this community for over 25 years. And specifically, we'd like to address the current provision in the right to farm uh, section where it requires each transaction involving a piece of real estate within a certain proximity to a farming activity to be notified of that farming activity and that a document be recorded. Um, that recording provision has been in place for quite some time but has not been done and it is our position that the recording requirement is cumbersome. It will tie up titles to properties make it very confusing. The, as written, there's a recorded document, but there is no document to unrecord that or take it back off. So if a piece of real estate transacted several times over with this recording process in effect, we would end up with several different recordings sitting on the title to a piece of property with no way of removing it. You just have a, a chain of title as to who's bought the property for years. So our, my testimony to you is that we, in, we have reviewed the, the uh, ordinance amendment and we are in support of it 
with regard to not having a recording provision on each transaction that is in the proximity of agricultural resource land. We're in favor of dropping the language to not record each transaction. Any questions? Appreciate your input. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Mr. Bozarth? Morning. I'm Bob Bozarth, 247-06 Woodard Road in Chehalis. And as a contractor, I would, I am very encouraged is what I see here happening. There might be a few bugs in this thing, I'm not sure about it all, but um, I think it's really great that Lewis County is working towards streamlining the permit process. We have a very short building season in Washington and it's important to process those permits as quickly as possible. And I find it kind of ironic that our neighbors to the north up here spend a lot of time counting Manzanita pocket golfers, and we're trying to make Lewis County one of the most business-friendly counties in the state, so I'd just like to say thank you. I'd like to have any response from staff on some of the comments that were just given us. I'll start backwards. So regarding the comment coming from the Realtor Lending Financial Group, um, yes, we did change the disclosure re requirements, um, and they have been moved, as Fred indicated, to another section. So we were able to still provide notice to people that, um, in addition to right to farm, um, Mineral resource lands and forest resource lands, people who are coming in for development permits are located in close proximity to it, so we were still able to achieve that disclosure, but we're doing it in a different format. Okay, so, as, okay. so addresses Mr. Ryan's comments. That's as well as the Farm Bureau um, comments um, related to noticing and disclosure. As to the request um, to amend the current ordinance by adding a definition related to, I guess my time's up according to Carrie. <laughs> As to the Farm Bureau's request to add a definition, add a word into the definition of agriculture related to agritourism. Um, we, res um, we support agritourism. We believe that it is currently allowed in ARL zones when it is secondary to an established agricultural use. Um, I recognize that an interim policy, as I have proposed, related to agritourism um, is uncomfortable for some. It's uncomfortable for me as well. I have inherited policies, and I know um, that the legacy of that is difficult. We are committed, though, to making changes both to um, how community development views agritourism, but as well as, and I'll speak on behalf of the Public Health and Social Services Director, we are committed to examining this issue and looking at ways to include it and embrace it in our community. So I would recommend that we not add a definition and that she, we would also ask in the interest of time that you pass this ordinance so that we can begin the streamlining process. Uh, what we did not mention is that while today is June 6, this ordinance will take effect July 1. In order to accommodate that date, staff will need to make significant revisions to current applications as well as um, establishing our website, so there's still quite a bit of work to be done in order to enact this ordinance on the part of staff. And then if I may have one final comment, um, I just want to say thank you to the folks who did participate. Um, public hearings and public workshops for the Planning Commission are noticed. Um, we do our best to get the word out, but, it, but these folks took the opportunity and took it upon themselves to read the materials and to provide input to us, and that is helpful to us. So I appreciate that, thank you. So I guess my question is, are we making realtors' job a little bit easier on this? Or as Mr. Ryan indicated, 
my understanding is that yes, we are making it easier okay. for not only the realtors, um, but also it's easier for folks um, to follow our rules and to follow and to be in compliance. Um, we also believe that we are still um, protecting our agricultural community. I would suggest that perhaps um, at times we remind people of our right to farm policy, maybe through proclamations or other opportunities that we have to reinforce that this is a policy. Um, Lewis County, to my knowledge, was one of the first counties to enact a right to farm policy here in the state. I know in my work with Grace Harbor, prior to my departure, that was not enacted until 2012. And so um, almost 10 years have passed since it was enacted, and it's probably time to acknowledge it. Okay. I see Mr. Aldridge, because I asked questions, I guess that entitles him you, to ask Are you willing to, to, to take uh, some additional information there? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. The, okay, Absolutely. thanks. The very point that, that Lee brings up uh, about addressing this as, as a tolerance policy on lands where the major income off that property is from agricultural purposes. I want to point out that there's very likely people living on agricultural resource land that are, that are not, not making a whole lot of money off of that land. You look at your demographics and, and a big chunk of the farming activity in this county is on pretty small acreage. It would not be difficult at all for people who are living on agricultural resource land to make more money off of ag tourism than they are off of the ag land. How are you going to, you know, how are you going to allow that? No. <laughs> Thank you. Lee, do you have a response to that? We are in the process of drafting a policy. Um, we will use that as, um, I guess, our position on agricultural resource lands. We'll be working with the Farm Bureau and the Agricultural Resource um, Tourism Group. I fully expect that this may result in changes to our code, so there will be other interactions with other groups, um, depending on which code we're amending. Could be the Planning Commission, could be through Public Health, could be directly with the County Commissioners. But we believe that we, we are going to move forward with changes that um, will be will meet the needs of the community who wishes to pursue agritourism. And can, can I just say one thing too? Uh, just just real quick, um, the intent of this code is really to streamline the permitting process. What we were trying to do, in some total, was streamline the permitting process, um, and and streamline our code a little bit. We did not attempt to do major policy changes here. This is not a policy related document. Uh, uh, this is not really a policy related change. We are simply trying to streamline the develop uh, the permit process. I, I have been brought up with the district. Ron Averill again from the Lewis County Farm Bureau. I, I guess it, it missed me that uh, you were taking the recording uh, virtue off of properties adjacent to agricultural resource land. And, I, you know, I, I, I appreciate the fact that this may, may be difficult for realtors uh, and, and for your mortgage people to get these things posted. But our problem as farmers is that someone from Seattle decides that they don't like the smell of of the farming, or there's too damn many flies going around, and they go and try to get us shut down in our operations. That means going to court. The, the original intent of the Right to Farm Act was to tell people that we were here first and we're providing food. And that if you come in and try to tell a farmer that they can't do something, yeah, and you try to take them to court, which many of them can't afford, that you're, you're not only in, impacting us as farmers, you're impacting your food supply. So I'm not really, really happy about not recording. Uh, you know, we have recordings in the, the, the forestry area. We got people that want to build a house within the 200 foot height of a tree, not recognizing the fact that trees fall. And so we put into the regulations that you couldn't build within 200 feet of the, of the tree. Those are the reasons that we have those things in code. So I'm, I hope that you're going to have something out there that's going to tell that person from Seattle that this is farm country. It's not a city. Thank you. Do you have any comment on that? 
Yes, I'll respond to that. Lee Napier, Director of Community Development. So the disclosures, um, statements that we make are related to development permits. So anytime anyone comes in with a building permit or a subdivision, that statement is made on the face of those of the action for the planning review. We also have not altered the disclosure of proximity to farms that realtors are required to make. And that comes from the nuisance lawsuits. It's a disclosure that realtors are obligated to make. That is still part of our code. And essentially, um, I'll, I'll state it to you since it's only a few statements, but a seller or residential real property shall make available to the buyer a statement that says that informs them that real property you are considering to purchase may lie in close proximity to a farm, and the operation of a farm involves usual and customary agricultural practices which are protected under RCW 748-305, the Washington Right to Farm Act. So that disclosure is still available and is the responsibility of the realtor who is listing the property. That remains. So that's still there. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Any other comments from audience? Okay. Okay. We can close the hearing. Pardon me. Going to close the hearing. This time we're closing the hearing for public testimony, so we'll move on to the next portion. I move that we approve Ordinance 1269, revising Title 16 and 17 of the Lewis County Code, with the comments, I should say, I'll just say that, and then I'll make my comments after you second it. I second. My parents were farmers. I'm presently a Farm Bureau member. I am a champion of agritourism. I want that to happen. So when I hear some of the things that uh, our friends from Farm Bureau are talking about, that we put that on our agenda for the future to see what other avenues, and I know you're developing a policy, so I really want that to be looked at. The other piece, thinking what uh, Mr. Bothart said, that you know we're streamlining. We're doing some things that will help folks out there get work done, get through the permit process, and provide more economic development for us and having people building and doing all the things we want people to do in our county. So I congratulate you for the Title 16 and 17 code scrub. And I know it takes a lot of time, but when you think about all the things that you were ever able to ferret out that will make it easier for our people, I appreciate that. But once again, I want to say that some of the issues regarding agritourism, right to farm, etc., that I want that to be uppermost part of our mind as we continue um, encouraging that from PL to Packwood and Centralia to Vader. We want agritourism to happen. Thank you. Thank you. So a motion has been made and second to approve Ordinance 1269. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passed. Seeing no further items on our agenda. I move that we adjourn. Motion has been made. I second. Motion has been made and second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Adjourn. Thank you.